A very good evening and a warm welcome to the Biz Roundup on another weekend. I'm Ashing Sunny Veera Singh. Let's have a look at the headlines first. <music> Government plans to scrutinize state banks. Central Bank keeps its policy rates unchanged and maximum interest rate on credit cards reduced to 18%. Government to repatriate Sri Lankans in Korea within the next two months whose employment contracts have been expired. News in detail. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka has decided to maintain the standing deposit facility rate and the standing lending facility rate of the Central Bank at their current levels of 4.5% and 5.5% respectively. Moreover, the CBSL has revised the regulated interest rates for credit cards, pre-arranged temporary overdrafts, pawning facilities and penal interest rate over the regular interest rate. The central bank states that it recognized the necessity to continue the accommodative monetary policy stance, particularly as market lending rates are yet to reflect the full pass-through of policy easing measures implemented thus far. The central bank notes that it anticipates a further reduction in overall market lending rates, thereby encouraging borrowing for productive economic activity and reinforcing support for COVID-19 hit businesses, as well as the broader economy given the conditions of subdued inflation. Moreover, as per the provincial estimates released by the Department of Census and Statistics, the Sri Lankan economy contracted by 1.6% in the first quarter of 2020, contrary to the expectations of the central bank. As per the available indicators, the adverse impact of COVID-19 on economic activity during the second quarter of 2020 is likely to be substantial. However, CBSL states that a faster rebound of economic activity is expected, especially in the fourth quarter of 2020, supported by improved political stability, the resultant improvement in business confidence and the lagged impact of monetary and fiscal stimulus. This expected rebound in the fourth quarter is essential for the country to record a positive growth rate during this year, CBSL further states. Accordingly, considering bank lending rates of certain financial products which continue to remain high, the central bank has decided to revise downward the caps on interest rates on credit cards to 18% per annum, on pre-arranged temporary overdrafts to 16% per annum and on pawning facilities to 10% per annum. Moreover, the CBSL is of the view that penal interest rates need to be capped at 2 percentage points over the regular interest rates charged on the relevant credit facility. The Ministry of Finance announces that a four-member committee has been appointed to investigate the allegations of irregularities and malpractices taken contrary to the objectives at the four main state banks of the country during the last five years. Accordingly, a four-member committee has been appointed to formally study the irregularities instances of violating the objectives and procedures of respective institutions, provision of the Banking Act as well as the unproductive activities and transactions at the Bank of Ceylon, People's Bank, National Savings Bank, Regional Development Bank and affiliated institutions after 8th of January 2015. The said committee is entrusted with submitting recommendations on legal, financial and administrative steps required to prevent any such situation from occurring in the future and also to identify the officials and external parties responsible for financial losses. The committee will also make recommendations to transform the state banking system into a more people-friendly service. The committee is chaired by former High Court Judge Cicero Ratnaika and also includes Chartered Accountant Susanta De Silva and retired Additional Auditor General W. Premananda. A representative of the Finance Ministry will serve as the Secretary of the committee. The committee has been instructed to submit its report within three months to the Secretary of the Finance Ministry, who in turn will present it to the Cabinet of Ministers. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka releasing the external sector report for June this year states that the trade deficit has narrowed in June 2020 to 161 million US dollars from 316 million US dollars in June 2019, recording the lowest monthly deficit after nearly 11 years. Accordingly, on a cumulative basis, the trade deficit narrowed by 335 million US dollars to 3262 million US dollars during the first six months of 2020 
from 3,597 million US dollars in the corresponding period of 2019. Meanwhile, in terms of trade, the ratio of the prices of export to the price of imports declined by 7.3 percent year-on-year in June 2020, with prices of exports declining at a faster pace than those of imports. However, as no tourist arrivals was recorded for the third consecutive month in June 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic, cumulative tourist arrivals remained at 507,311 during the first six months of 2020, compared to 1,008,449 arrivals recorded during the corresponding period in 2019. Accordingly, cumulative earnings from tourism, which are estimated based on tourist arrivals, remained at 956 million US dollars during the first six months of 2020, recording a drop of 49.7% from the corresponding period of 2019. Minister of Labour Nimal Siripala de Silva says that steps will be taken to repatriate 1,600 Sri Lankans in Korea whose employment contracts have been expired within the next two months. Minister made these observations at a discussion held with officials of Korean Institute of Human Resource Development in Sri Lanka at the Ministry of Labour last Tuesday. Korea would Yavanala the Ape Shamiki Anging, Igdas High Sea Kapamana Pisaki, Kale Avasangvilla, own Korea Vir and the Sitnoa, Lanka would end the Berua, may Covid Asa the Nisa. Korea Ve Nithianu own Lanka would again no Gana, take Korea would Aluteng, Shamiki Angapati, I want to pull one Kamakne. The Enisa may Prasni, Waham, which in the Utinisa, Mama Sri Lankan Guans Sevavat, Eva Gamer Visheshema, Ape Niro the Hyatana. Ayatan ne Bahara Hamuda we in the Harinut, Siala Genela, Saka Chaka la Kramabe, the Aksakaskara, Ita Ikmaning, the letter Korea we sitina, Egdas Haisia Pamanu, Kala Sima, our sonu, Sumikian Lanka, what again name as Anda. Mehidi, Api Porunduna, Niro the Ayatana, Madiastaniak, Apavisim, Madiastana Kipiak, Apage Punu Madiastana, all of you to Kerla, Antarjatika Primitin. Galapen Ayuri, Eva Sakaskarla, E Genena Samikyant, Ahar Pana di Sa Pasukan Sial, Dina Dahat Labadi Matat, Vishesha Guanyana, Sri Lankan Guan Sivi Maging Yavala, Eaya, Masa de Kakakala, Sima Vatula, May Sildenam Lanka Water, Genema Sandha, Avashe Vedapilula, Sakaskara. Eva Gema, Korean, Nyojiti Aper Penala Duna, Danata, may Vibaha Pawatuima Sandaha, Tiena Pahasukang, Madipadu, Enisa, Danatapi, Homagam, may Ayatene Ape Ayatene Satua, Akara Hataraka Pamela Idam Idamak Tienua, Ita Ikmaning, Ehi Tau Kalikaho, Gordonagili, Hadala, Disi Yakar Pamela, Ekawaram, Vibahageta, Penny City Mata Puluang, Vibaga Madiastania, Kawachia, Computer, Yantra Sial, Sakaskala, Sadi Matapitira Nekara, Esanda. Avashia e Takshaniku Pakarana Kuriaving Labadi Marat Ikangauna. Stay tuned for more news after this short break. Welcome back after the break. Secretary of Ministry of Foreign Relations, retired Admiral Professor Joynath Kolumbagay stresses that the COVID-19 is a clarion call to restructure the country's economy from import-based economy to an export-based economy. Foreign Ministry Secretary made these observations last Wednesday at the event of the Assumption of Duties of State Minister of Regional Corporation, Tarakal Balasurya. We have neglected our region for a long, long time. The economic integration of South Asia region is less than 5% of our combined GDP. We have a long way to go. Sri Lanka is situated in a very important geographical location. We are one country which is part of South Asia, SAAP, and also Bimstek. And we are one country where the Western Indian Ocean or the Arabian Sea meet the Bay of Bengal. So we are not a small country in geostrategic sense. This COVID has given us an opportunity to look at ourselves, revisit our economic model, a transformation from 
an import based, import dependent economy to a production based and export oriented economy. Official data showed that Central Bank has bought 162.5 million US dollars from the interbank forex markets in July 2020 after negative private credit in May and June. Data also revealed that the country's forex reserves picked up by 400 million US dollars to 7.1 billion US dollars in July after a 500 million dollar swap from the Reserve Bank of India. In May and June, private credit was negative though the public sector deficit expanded as tax revenues fell partly due to a so-called fiscal stimulus involving value added and other tax cuts. In June, the central bank also bought dollars on a net basis purchasing 69 million US dollars and selling 9.25 million dollars. By purchasing dollars, the central bank can stop the currency appreciating as credit turns negative in an explicit or implicit de facto real effective exchange rate targeting exercise. Except after the 2009 crisis, the central bank has kept the exchange rate close to the level the peg had broken and prevented appreciation, in the worst record among South Asian monetary authorities. During the March to April liquidity injection cycle, the rupee fell from around 182 to close to 200 to the US dollar. It was then kept around 185 to the US dollar in July. Over the last two weeks, the rupee had been allowed to appreciate silently. Accordingly, official data showed that Central Bank has bought $162.5 million from the interbank forex markets in July 2020 after negative private credit in May and June. As a measure to develop the local shrimp industry of the country, Board of Investment of Sri Lanka signs a 1.8 million US dollars agreement to convert the Vaname shrimp project in Putlam to state-of-the-art technology. The Board of Investments signed an agreement with HTC Aqua Culture Limited for a 12 million post larvae capacity shrimp farm in Putlam. HTC Aquaculture is a member of the HTC Group, which also includes HTC Agriculture and Livestock and HTC Lesho, a local destination management company. The agreement was signed on behalf of the BOI by its chairman, Susantharat Naika, and on behalf of the HTC Aquaculture by its managing director, Mansur Hussain, and chief executive officer, Sitara Hafil. The project, with an initial investment of 1.8 million US dollars, envisages the conversion of an existing shrimp farm on a 16 acre land using state of the art technology in shrimp culture and management. This includes the usage of high density circular ponds. Methods for high productivity per footprint per cycle, efficient energy usage and responsible water management. HTC Aquaculture Limited's managing director Hussain explained that the company has secured a further 37 acres of land earmarked for the second phase of this project which will involve inland farming of Vaname, a first of its kind in Sri Lanka. How has the trading of the Colombo stock market performed during the gone week and what expectations can the traders have for the coming week? We now have a subject expert of investment institution First Capital Holdings speaking to our television. We saw the ruling party gaining uh, two-thirds uh, majority uh, in the new government and uh, with that creates uh, political stability flowing into policy stability over a long period of time which uh, significantly favors uh, equity investments. Uh, with that we saw strong buying interest uh, emerging in the market uh, specifically uh, in the banking sector and uh, capital goods sector. In addition to that uh, we saw some speculative trading also taking place in construction and uh, building material uh, counter. On Thursday, we saw the policy announcement uh, coming in place, though there was an expectation of another additional rate cut. The monetary board uh, concluded the meeting with the decision to hold rates at uh, present levels and uh, with that, however, uh, they had decided to uh, bring down uh, some of the uh, lending rate caps uh, down sharply. And uh, with that, uh, we saw a bit of uh, profit taking and a bit of selling pressure uh, emerging uh, in the in selected uh, stocks. 
during Thursday and also a bit during Friday. However, it didn't actually uh, break the uptrend that was there in the market, only managed to slow it down. Speaking further, research head of First Capital Holdings, Demantha Matthew, pointed out some sectors that would be highly benefited from the positive momentum in the market in the coming week. Looking at the upcoming week, uh, we are expecting a bit of buying interest to again uh, come into the market uh, with the positivity that is uh, there around. Specifically, uh, banking sector counters are preferred uh, considering the lower uh, valuation of the counters while we feel that uh, telecom sector counters and also some of the plantation sector counters would have a strong interest considering the uh, higher T prices that's there in the market and also the data streaming revenues being strong in the market. So with these uh, things uh, we feel that investor sentiment is likely to be strong and we feel that uh, the upward trend in the market is likely to uh, continue where we feel that mostly the local uh, investors would be the higher participants that are there in the market. On the foreign side, the selling pressure is likely to continue and uh, however, the selling pressure is likely to be completely absorbed. And that's all the news for today. See you tomorrow with State of Business at 7.45pm. Until then, take care. Good night.